Yeah! <laughs> Look at her. Uh-huh. Look over there. Look at them. Uh-huh. And bitch put it. She's deadly good. Look at her. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Look at All, the Hey Queen After Show, where our super celebrity guest looks at some of the queens they played with, slayed with, or even laid with, and spills a little tea. Ah, the tea was scalding hot, and I threw it in your face. Uh, throws a little deadly nightshade if they have to, or just tells us something that we don't know. Today, our guest is Dragula winner, Bitch Pudding. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Hi. Hi! <laughs> and Bitch What and Sweetie, you were nominated for an Emmy just recently. We forgot to talk about that in the main show. I was! I, for makeup. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. If you saw my busted ass in that picture you showed earlier that I didn't Emmy nominated for makeup, I would have been like, you fucking lying. I'm livid. <laughs> oh, okay. And we found out behind the scenes, Bitch was asking Erica about what paint she uses on her head, and she let us know what? It's called Snazaroo. It's child <laughs> face paint. Can a bitch get a sponsor? <laughs> she <laughs> she looks good every time. Come on, Snazaroo. Snazaroo. <laughs> Snazaroo. Snazaroo, now sold out in all stores. Erica can no longer get it. <laughs> all right, bitch, I think you know how to play this game, don't you? Yeah, you look at them and then say what you think. It's like show and tell. Exactly. <laughs> you know, sweetie. Well, let us begin. Look at her. Eva Destruction. Oh, Eva! Oh, I don't have to kill her. Great. Um, um, <laughs> One of the people that inspired you yes. in your beginning of your drag uh -huh. career. Uh, I saw her come with the legendary children to, I was part of a, part of a drag troupe called the House of Gunt in Savannah, Georgia. Where it's a whole bunch of art school drag, very much like you know, good drag over there. <laughs> um, where we take the word gender and just fucked it raw with a chainsaw. Literally, it was like all encompassing, all styles of drag. And uh, the legendary children, which is a collective uh, that's now Wissy Magazine. They kind of like grew into Wissy Magazine, but they were this collective of you know art and drag. They did a show in Savannah, and I got to see Eva do her laughing track number. This yeah. Was right before she did it at Pride, so it blew the fuck up. But I literally was like, what the. Fuck? Like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> and then I followed the, her on Instagram, and literally, you know, I saw that she was working several nights a week in Atlanta, Georgia, being a full-time performer. And I was like, okay, it's possible. So I got out of a kind of an abusive relationship, and uh, not physically, it was just emotionally. I got used to my art, and I kind of was like, I could do my senior year in Atlanta. They had a satellite campus there. I was going to do performing arts, and I convinced my professors to make my thesis bitch. So my thesis ended up being bitch, and I wow. was like, I got an opportunity to move in with Crying Callie, who now goes by Mae Calloway. She transitioned. Hi, Mae. Love you, sis. Um, she, you know, is part of the Legendary Children, too, and I could, like, it was my way in, and I was like, okay, great. So I moved there, and first night out, I saw the other show, which is a cast show that had Violet. I saw Violet that night, Celeste Holmes, Jay Lish, um, Edie Cheeseburger, and Eva Destruction, and... I saw that show looking booger as fuck, and I was like, I want to be on this cast. Uh -huh. And a year later, I got on, and um, Eva is literally one of the most phenomenal entertainers of our time. Like, I, if you ever see her live, she is giving you every fiber of her being. She always, like, rehearses her numbers, and she just is, like, this ferocious human being, and... You know, I just saw her years and years and years audition for Drag Race, and it never come into fruition. And, like, you know, that's a lot of people, right? Like, there's these lot of local legends where I tour, and I'm like, this bitch should have been on eight seasons ago. Yeah. Why? Oh, she trains? Oh, we'll be a little shady about that. But, you know, like, you know, <laughs> she lets it all on. Mm -hmm. And literally, um, right after I filmed my season, you know, DragCon happened, and she saw me. We were watching Nightgowns. And I kind of went up to her. I was like, why do you keep auditioning for the wrong show? Mm. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, girl, like, you're a fucking beast. Like, you're kind of a demon when you perform. Like, I know you want to, like, show off that beautiful fucking fur coat that you got. <laughs> like, baby, I see them figure waves when you take off that fucking legging at the end of the night. You, you look good. Like, I know you want to fuck it up. You love, you know, wizard shit, magic, video games. Like, come on to the dark side, bitch. Like, you know, like, yeah, I kind of think of Drag Race as, like, you know, 
the Justice League. Uh huh. And drag is like the Legion of Doom. Yeah. And we got cuter outfits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look at him. Look at him. Land Insider, drag regular season three winner. I was gunning for him because technically it makes me the reigning queen. Uh huh. So my legacy, no, I'm joking. He's right. totally the winner. <laughs> <laughs> He's totally the winner. I'm no longer the winner. Um, Landon is one of the most fiercest, and he's another one where, like, you know, he was in the dressing room right after my season. I knew they asked him both seasons to do Dragula, and he said no. And I, I found that out, like, recently. And I was, like, finally working with him. I, like, followed him online for years, and I love drag kings. I always try in digital drag show. You'll never see a show that I run where you don't have full representation in terms of diversity of you know, skin tone, but also like diversity in drag. Like I all have non-binary, drag kings, queens, whatever, like trans, like we want, I want a full representation because that's the kind of representation that was in Atlanta. And you know, I, I just always followed him and I was like, I fucking love him. And I finally got to work with him. I was like, dude, why did you not a yes? And he's like, I don't know if it's like for me, like I don't know if like, you know, I don't, I, it's like I do dark, but I don't know if it's that way. I'm like, look, I won. Do I look like, do I always wear black? No. I got black thong on today, though. Um, <laughs> so anyway, he did the show, looked fucking great, and uh, of course he said yes to being. Uh, we, I had, I wanted it for that first digital drag show to have Dragula representation really well, and I wanted all three winners, especially because Landon just came off this win. You know, unlike uh, the reality people, just came off of their wins too. But I'm like, they can't tour. Yeah, and that's probably the best part about winning is like finally being able to go to the you know the UK and seeing a girl dress up as you in a yeah. fucking full ass alien outfit. Shout out to Amy. And like, you know, just like <laughs> she was painting herself in the meet and greet to be the first in line and came in as the full alien. And Love I was it. like, bitch work. And Landon is just fucking great. And he hand paints everything, does everything, a very artist true and true. And like for the first like six shows, he couldn't figure out green screen. He hand painted his set every time for the digital drag show. Wow. And has done, you know, we're past 20 shows at this point, and Landon and him both have just constantly come up with new content every week. And I, it's such an honor being in a winner's circle with them both. Okay, look at all. Victoria Elizabeth Black. Speaking of resurrection, I'm glad I didn't have to fight that bitch. Uh -huh. <laughs> she, she looks good. Yeah. Like unclockable, like professional makeup artist. Meanwhile, I'm like showing up like, <laughs> it's okay, I don't know. Um, she's fucking great. Amazingly talented. Uh, you know, the whole time people were like, oh, she's quiet, she's quiet. And then I went to visit her. I, I, last year during Halloween Horror Night, she was working, but she booked me part of her creature feature uh, um, at Southern Nights in Orlando. And uh, we went there, and she was like, bitch, let me tell you something. I got home after filming, and my parents told me that I had Asperger's. I didn't know that the whole time I was filming. And I was like, oh my God, girl, you could have used that for plot line. She's like, I know. And I'm like, you probably would have beaten me. I know. <laughs> and I was like, bitch, I love you. Um, she makes tits, okay? And she can match any skin tone. She's got the full gambit, regardless what tone you might be, undertone. Mm. If you send her your foundation stick, she'll match it to your foundation stick. And they're good. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Look at What you want to look at is not what you're going to look at. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the icon, the legend, the doll, the boom boom gun. Yes, fantastic. We yeah, were roommates. You, you lived together. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, we were roommates. I think when she filmed the episode of Hey Queen, we were actually okay. roommates. I was like on tour, but she like came through and did it. Um, Amazing, love Gia, trans woman, goddess, everything, super sweet. Um, I wish she would have a reality show of people following her because when she goes off on a tangent and just like really rips one, it's the most hilarious shit. There was this one <laughs> show she did, she talked about this little girl holding a phone that was the only light in the room. So she kept performing, it was just like the way she was just saying shit, it was just like so fucking funny. And um, I kind of think they did her a little dirty. You know, people got like, you know, she came across as a villain, but like, I'm I'm part of the villain franchise, so I'm gonna live. Um, and I, she's fucking entertaining. Like, yeah. Like literally, like when she went home, I was like, oh fuck, like 
I know. Okay, like it was spicy. I was like, let's get more. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, I kept Beefy all four. Like, why'd you send Gia home then? I was like, come on. Um, love Gia. I mean, she yeah. makes good TV. She makes great TV. What do you mean? <laughs> I just, she's just like, ah, oh, she's good. She's really good. She loved you. All right, look at oh, Abora. <laughs> now, you flicked her boyfriend's dick. It became a big issue. I didn't come out with a shirt then because Me Too just happened. Right. And I was like, I don't want to be canceled. Right. It wasn't sexual yeah, harassment. Because right. that was the one thing. When she came at me, I was like, this bitch is really going to cancel me. Like, I'm not going to be able to get booked. Because mm. like, she's like, sexual assault allegation. Like, it was just a lot. And I was like... Because what she did in that moment when she came for me, she kind of took, things, she beautifully wove things that happened in like a six month time period into one magical night. Mm. And I was like, oh. And then like, you know, of course it was in front of cameras. Everyone bought that as fact. And of course she looked like the winner because she looked like Dragula and I looked like a, you know, wearing a Beyonce costume. But you know, she's, she won, so you see where the queen is now. But it just like I, it, it was so hard playing that strategically in that moment because she came at me and it was really hard because I was like, "Bitch, I'm so glad you're here. You represent Atlanta. You represent like people that like, because I've seen so many times like Eva Destruction who never got on something until like she got on Drag You know, like I saw people that like my sisters and brothers, or my siblings, who like constantly try to get on a platform and you finally get on one. And I'm with you. Like we worked together a month ago. Like we're on a cast together. Like let." fuck up these bitches. Let's show Atlanta like we're the fucking tea. And we did that, but we were friends until the very end. Right. Because uh, she had to go through her own stuff. But literally, I, I, we talk all the time. I pick her ass up. We play Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links together, Smash Bros. together. That person is one of the most influential artists of our time, and I don't think she gives herself enough credit. She's kind of her own worst critic. Mm. And I see I'm that way as well, so I kind of, we kind of bounce each other back off and forth on that. And... Love that bitch. Like, oh, uh, like, the most, like, when she won Drag Queen of the Year, I was crying. Like, because I was like, yes, bitch. <laughs> yes. And, like, yeah. she helped me out with, you know, the janitor thing. She's like, just do something stupid like a janitor. And I ended up, like, like working that and see my finale look. I kind of gave her direction. I was like, bitch. She's like, what do I do for talent? I'm like, you have that fucking circus costume that you used way too early in Dragula. Rework it and do what you're supposed to do where you get up and you have all these people come out from underneath you because she did it for a local barge competition right mm. before Dragula and it was like fucking fierce. And it wasn't, it, right after the show we were both homeless and felony and Meatball were so gracious to let us stay and crash on their couch and like we spent Christmases, like the past four Christmases together. Like I love her through and through and she's a fucking ugly ass bitch and I hope she dies. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so sweet. Hello children, click here. Welcome.